All right, so stress. Stress is pretty important. Now, there's going to be instances where there's words that, and these are kind of common words too. The only difference will be where the stress is placed. Now, stress is this little mark you see in um, some names like Rene, Jose. They have that little mark to, to tell you where to put more emphasis in the word. So these are some of the examples I like to use to show why this is important. So we have this word, watsasa, and we have watsasa. Okay, and then we have paspasin and paspasin. So you see where the stress is in different spots. Now this one especially, um, kots kots, this has uh, the stress on the front. Now we have these little glottals in here, and we're going to talk about those next. But right now, when we listen to these two words, you have kots kots, and you have kots kots. And so this stress helps you not make the, the listener mistake what you're saying. And so it is with this instance, we have watsasa, and that's to ride. Then we have watsasa, and that's to dance. So you can see the difference in those two verbs. You want to make sure that you can tell the what the person's talking about, so the stress helps indicate that. And like here we have paspasin, and we have paspasin. So, you know, these sound real similar, but this one would refer to something that's rancid or moldy. And this one right here would be like describing like a fluttering type of, uh, maybe a riffle going through the grass or a flutter type of effect coming from nature. And then kots kots is a metal lark. And why I like to use this one, because the differences are pretty big. Colts, colts, that's something that could be either naked, or it could be even land that's just ripped bare and it's, there's no trees left. So you can see why stress is so important. And this little mark here is going to indicate that to you when you're reading and writing it. There are a few words that don't have stress in them. Most of the time there's always going to be stress in a, in a word. Primarily, what I've noticed is when there's long vowels in there, only one long vowel, the stress will be above that long vowel. There's two long vowels here, so it goes on the end. But you see, this is all short vowels, and here's another one with one long vowel in it, and again, the stress is above that vowel. So that is something that will, will kind of help you to remember when you're writing it mainly where it's going to go. But there's a few words like uh, tattoo. I mean, that doesn't really have the stress. That's how we say, like, somewhat. And you have words like ko, ko. That's a pretty common word. But it doesn't have any stress. It's just it's spelled real similar to this. Ko. There's no stress there. And you also have words like tots. That's how we say good. There's only one vowel, so we don't really need to mark that anywhere. But like tattoo, I mean, how I'm saying it, I'm saying it like this, tattoo, but I mean, I don't think that really matters. You might have people that say tattoo. You know, it's, you're, you're, you're not going to run into that too often, but there are words without stress. But it's very important that you know where the stress goes in a word, especially when you're speaking it, that you're not mixing these two things up. 